Hello, hi there, welcome to a full topic video looking at income elasticity of demand. So income elasticity of demand measures the responsiveness of demand to a change in income. Technically, YED or income elasticity refers to the percentage change in demand for a good or service or the percentage of the spending on a good or service accompanied by a 1% change in income and the formula for income elasticity is the percentage change in quantity demanded divided by the percentage in real, in other words, inflation adjusted income. When it comes to income elasticity of demand, we make a distinction between different types of goods and services. First of all, normal goods. Now, normal products have a positive income elasticity of demand meaning that as income goes up, we spend more on normal goods. Within that category, points two and three, there are normal luxuries and normal necessities. With a normal luxury product, the income elasticity of demand is strongly positive. Indeed, the coefficient is greater than one. Now, we'll come to some examples in a few seconds. Normal necessities, on the other hand, have a positive income elasticity of demand. In other words, you spend more on the product as income goes up, but not substantially more. And therefore, it tends to have a low positive income elasticity of between 0 and 1. There is also a category of products which we're going to spend a few seconds thinking about called inferior products. Now, these goods and services have a negative income elasticity, zero or less, meaning that as income goes up, demand goes down. Inferior goods are sometimes called counter-cyclical products, which means they're goods and services whose demand varies inversely to the economic cycle. Typically, if you're producing or selling an inferior good, when real incomes are, are heading lower in a recession, your sales may go up. Here's a little exercise. We did this in class. It might be worth pressing the pause button. I gave up. Uh, I gave my students eight products and asked them to think, what do you think? Do you think it's a luxury, necessity or inferior good? Have a go, press the pause button and when you're ready, I'll offer my thoughts on these examples. So what do we think? Luxury, necessity or inferior good? I've, I've listed eight products. Again, the crucial thing is context matters. So what is a necessity to some one person could be a luxury to another. Uh, what's a necessity to one person could be an inferior good to another person. Context does matter. Here's my thinking. I think a cell phone subscription, well, maybe 20 years ago, it's probably a luxury item. Uh, now, a monthly cell phone subscription is probably a necessity. I suppose it depends who's paying. But affordability remains crucial, particularly the type of uh, mobile phone subscription you, you are able or willing to take. My instinct is that own label baked beans, economy brands, that oftentimes you see in supermarkets, they're probably an inferior good. Uh, particularly those low price uh, economy label products that often uh, are uh, supermarkets are targeting at uh, relatively low income households. What about a Sky Sports subscription package? Well, again, income elasticity of demand is contextual. For some fans, uh, it's a necessity. They're going to they're going to pay it, and even if you know if their income changes, they'll they'll hang on to their Sky Sports subscription package. For others, it's it's quite expensive. And they'll only take it out if they think they can afford it from month to month. What about a breakfast takeaway from McDonald's? Well, this is quite interesting, uh, looking at the income elasticity of demand for restaurants where you sit down compared to sort of fast food uh, services. My instinct, again, is that it's probably positive, but perhaps close to zero. For many people, the amount they spend at McDonald's isn't linked to their income. It's often just habitual choice. A pair of designer sunglasses, probably a luxury good, I would think. Income elasticity greater than plus one. Fresh fruit, uh, probably a necessity. You know, it's the income elasticity of less than one. But again, it depends on the context of the buyer. Plant-based vegan foods, well, lots of companies now gearing up to sell more of these products. For some already a necessity, they'll buy it regardless of price or income. For others, a luxury uh, product that uh, they may consume as income rises. Whereas a large chocolate hamper from Hotel Chocolat, I think is clearly a luxury good. Indeed, their pricing tells you a little bit about this. It's 
they have a high price point compared to, for example, to supermarket chocolates or Thorntons, and they're targeting customers with perhaps with a greater disposable income. The income our system of demand, by the way, for sit-down restaurants is, is, is higher than that of fast food restaurants. Most of the uh, empirical evidence suggests that, although it's not necessarily particularly high, it probably is greater. Quite interesting, just thinking about this link between income and consumption. What I've done here is I've taken the uh, households in the UK by income and arranged them by decile group. So the highest 10% group is the richest 10% in the UK. On average, they spend just over £1,000 a week. And you can see that as we go down the decile groups, we're moving to the, the relatively poorer households and spending does fall in each category. The lowest 10%, the bottom, the poorest 10% of households spend just over 209 or £200 pounds a week. So there's quite a big discrepancy. If you think about restaurants, hotels, again, you see this quite strong income spending relationship, particularly as you get into the 8th, 9th and 10th deciles. That spending goes up quite rapidly, suggesting a strong income elasticity of demand. And likewise, you get a similar data, just just plotting it slightly differently for you as we go from poorest to richest in terms of spending on sports admissions, ticket prices, subscriptions, leisure class fees, etc. and sports equipment. Substantial jump, huge jump, almost double the spend per week once you get into the, uh, the richest 10% of populations. So just a word about inferior goods. Well, inferior goods have a negative income elasticity of demand. That means as income goes up, spending, aka demand, goes down. Uh, so during periods of growth, when the economy is expanding, then demand for inferior goods will tend to fall, causing an inward shift of the demand curve. Whereas in a recession, particularly if real wages are going down, if wages are rising less quickly than prices, then market demand for inferior goods tends to rise. Okay, it's, one can be slightly generic about these things, but inferior goods typically tend to be the economy products, own label products, perhaps at the deep discounters. Urban bus transport, widely regarded as inferior to perhaps taxi travel, owning your own car. We'll look at cigarettes in a second. They are classified as an inferior good. So to economy class travel, Again, own label cereals and uh, kind of classic economy foodstuffs, which are very cheap in supermarkets, uh, often mass produced and cheap products. Um, they appeal to people on a very tight budget because people have got limited incomes. A couple of examples here. This, this chart shows the share of household spending, the percentage of household spending on bus fares in the UK. Again, arranging it by disposable income group. So the highest 10% is the richest, the lowest 10% is the poorest. And you can see that the highest percentage of spending actually is with the second decile group, 0.6%. And if we think about gambling, for example, again, the second decile group has the highest percentage of spending going on gambling by disposable income. It's difficult to, to make really precise judgments from this data, but it does suggest, for example, that spending on gambling uh, is a relatively higher percentage for higher income, for low income compared to higher income people. Now, I said I'd just say something about tobacco. This is the data in the UK for the average weekly spend by households on tobacco and narcotics. Again, arranged by gross income decile group. The figures actually show a relatively similar pattern, just under £4 per week by households. But of course, if you then express it as a share of income, then the, the poorest 10% of households spend the highest percentage of their spend on tobacco and narcotics, uh, hinting a little bit that cigarettes could well be regarded as an inferior product. Keep in mind, keep in mind when you discuss income elasticity that we have called we have something called product ranges. The income elasticity demand for a product will vary according to the range of products. Own label foods typically have a lower income elasticity than the higher priced, higher value, so-called finest or taste the difference ranges. There's a downward trend in income elasticity for basic products. As society becomes richer over time, our tastes and preferences change. So what we would have regarded as a luxury, you know, when I was in my prime several years ago, probably not, but might be regarded by the current generation as a necessity. 
Interestingly, businesses will finish with this point. Businesses use product range as a way of shifting demand towards items with a higher income and assistive system demand. Good example is the biscuit sector. McVitie's, fine biscuit maker, they repositioned their, their core product, their digestive, with some, with some new premium flavours. <laughs> Presumably appealing to customers with that little extra spending power because those premium flavours carried it. A premium price and indeed let's just think very quickly about why is income and assistive demand important for businesses particularly when it comes to their strategy knowing the coefficients of income and assistive really does help businesses to predict the effect at a macro level uh, the economic cycle on their sales so if you have a high income and assistive demand typically your sales tend to be quite volatile as during the course of the economic cycle. If you're selling necessities like I don't know, toothpaste or whatever, or milk, or uh, who knows, you know, fish fingers or something, then your sales will be more stable over the course of the economic cycle because your income elasticity of demand will be lower. It also suggests that knowing about YD is important. It means that businesses uh, need to have a diversified product range, a range foodstuffs or drinks or what have you that cuts across different income levels higher value added products increase the margins okay so typically if you can sell those premium products they typically have a high income elasticity of demand and if there are relatively few substitutes they tend to have a low price elasticity of demand so there we go this has been a quick sort of 10 minute journey through the economics of income elasticity of demand and thank you for joining in.